Now that we have our margins and our baseline grid working together, it's at this point that we can add a grid system. So that will be in the form of columns and rows, and it will help us consistently measure the width and height and things on our page. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I left click on the layer called grid because that's where it's going to live. And then I'm going to go up to the layout menu at the top of the screen and choose create guides. In here, it will give me a gusset value of five millimeters. That's no good. I can type in then 11 PT and hit the tab key and that will translate it to 3.881 millimeters. <laughs> so need to make sure the preview checkbox is turned on that the guides are going to fit to the margins as we've been doing all along the baseline grid, the margins are all aligned. It makes sense that everything else should be. And then we should add rows. So you'll notice now when I start tapping up, you'll see these pale looking turquoise lines. So as I'm informing InDesign to keep adding extra rows, it's putting the space between them that we need. And the reason why I've chosen this because of value is because well, it's the same size as the baseline grids. I'm just going to keep tapping up in here until I get them lining up. So it is going to be a little bit of back and forth, depending on what you decide you want for margins and what your baseline grid size is going to be. You'll just have to come in here into this dialog box, set the gutter value to match your leading, and then just experiment with a number of rows. As it happens in here, this is eight and it works fine. Notice the turquoise lines match exactly with the gray lines of the baseline grid. In terms of columns, again, I need to swipe over that one. I'm going to type in 11 PT because it's a bit easier than typing in all the millimeters. And this time again, I'll keep tapping up and increasing. Six columns would be perfectly acceptable as a basic grid number, but with a magazine, you're going to need much more flexibility to be able to accommodate every different type of varying situation that happens on your layouts. So I'm going to increase this to double that amount and have 12 columns and then I'll click OK. I will make sure that I immediately go up to the layers panel and lock my grid layer so I don't risk moving any of those guides. And yes, on the face of it, there's a heck of a lot of line work going on here. And at first it's going to take a, a while to get used to seeing all of this on top of your layout as well. But what this will give you is the opportunity to stop agonizing over whether things are the same size from one page to another. As long as you utilize this grid, you're being consistent. You're working to the same plan from one page to another. And far from being a burden, it should actually save you a great deal of time.